excuse is there. So, let's jump into it. Uh, that hand is hot oh, garbage. Jumping with your hands. Both of yeah, it looks like a step keep. <laughs> both of those hands are hot garbage. So, I think Joe's keeping, and Tim being on the play is probably also keeping. No, <laughs> Tim is on the draw. Like on the draw, if you have a reanimate and you believe that the matchup is really horrible, you can just keep it and go eight card discard and then reanimate all in. But since he doesn't even have reanimate, he's totally gonna, yeah, money gonna guess. Or did you keep? No, he didn't. Don't tell me he kept that. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's uh, still waiting for him to decide. I actually don't hate Cho's hand here. Like he's got the turn to Chalice and the Force of her backup, yeah. which already goes quite a like quite a long way in, in this matchup. So yeah. Yeah, I agree. The six is reasonable. It's not good by any stretch of the imagination. But Chalice on a one is his best form of interaction game one. And then you know Force of Will hopefully make sure that Chalice resolves or takes care of something yeah. that tries to, you know, natural discard into Exhume type of thing. I'm looking at Cho's decklist. What does he have, like, something to bloat him out on show and tell? Like, I guess he could put in Baneful Strix and block uh, a Grizzlebrand or something. That's not ideal. Ensnaring Bridge? Yeah, Ensnaring Bridge, I guess. Yeah, he has uh, a one of Ensnaring Bridge and a couple of transmute artifacts to try and find it. And Tim's way to beat on Snaring Bridge should be Tide Spot Terran, I guess. Or Hapless, Re Hapless Researcher beats. No, I don't think so. <laughs> or, you know, as we saw earlier, if Joe brings in Notion Thief. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> force Joe to draw seven cards to attack you with Grizzlebrand. <laughs> That's so cute. <clears throat> so he had a, for uh, Tim had a Force of Fate. Did he scry it to the top? I saw only saw the card. I guess he scryed it to the top. Yes, he's right to the top. Yeah. So, trying to sequence this for Tim. Like, I don't hate just burning the Lotus Petal here to get uh, Brainstorm plus Fetch. Yeah. Uh, he really needs to find Entomb or Hapless Researcher, Show and Tell, something to do. Fortunately, he has a Gristlebrand in, in hand. Um, not burning the Brainstorm here because it's his blue card for Force of Will. Something happened to Cho's hand. Joe ch checking his Twitter. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Violet the Pro Tour, man. He, he's playing playing here and checking his Twitter. Multitasking. Yeah, Pro Tour goes live in like 10 minutes, so. Yeah. <laughs> so he's sitting there waiting for his draft and. No, 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 no. On, on his laptop. Oh, let me finish this. Nope, 3 5 doesn't day 2. <laughs> oh, you're, you're right. What do you actually do on the second day of the Pro Tour? Explore Sydney. Go see. Yeah, probably. Go see the Opera House. Go see the uh, the toaster oven. So on the other hand, you you would be there like at least a week ahead or something. Like I would actually be interested in seeing what you can do on the second day of the, of the Pro Tour. Yeah, they used to have side events and stuff, but I think they they got rid of that. It used to be open to the public. All right. Oh yeah, I remember that. Oh, Antum is a great card yeah, here. So. Entomb really made with Force back up and show Lex the second blue card. All right, important uh, here, Joe didn't play Chalice on one. Which is cut. Yeah, yeah. Ch like, Chalice would have helped him a lot because ten then Tim would have needed to Force of her. Yeah. So, not, not quite sure what he's doing with that play, what he's trying to represent. I guess he was playing around days, and there's no spell piece, so yeah, about okay. around three days. Is... That's fair. Playing around days. Uh, I'm not... The thing is, if you only have a single force of it up anyways, I think I would play into the days here. Yeah, I'm, I'm not afraid of forcing a days even. Chalice is just a very impactful card. I mean, like, yeah. look at Tim's hand. One drop, one drop, one drop. Force of Will, yeah. Gristlebrand. Uh, the game should be over here, I guess. So I guess, well, no, Joe got rid of the Thopter Foundry, too. I was trying to think of possible outs. Yeah, Thopter Foundry is cool because you can kind of fuck Grizzlebrand if you have the sword as well. By sacrificing the token after blockers are declared. Well, you can't sacrifice oh, yeah. <laughs> a token. It's sacrifice a non-token artifact. Oh, it says non-token artifact? Woo. Yeah, here comes the chalice <laughs> on one. It could meet two dazes. <laughs> Uh, unfortunately, uh, yeah. both of those dazes were just recently drawn, so... 
The thing is, I would actually not date, uh, not force of that because force of is Tim's most important card right now, mm -hmm. and he doesn't really care about the Chalice. Like he only cares about Insaring Bridge at this point. Yeah, uh, you know Tim has a commanding lead on the board state already. I also like. Yeah, the thing is, but if Chill draws Insaring Bridge now, okay, now he has got tight spot turn that helps him out. Okay, but before that, I. Uh, yeah. I, I really wouldn't burn that first fill there. So I guess I'm already starting to look at sideboards. Um, uh, so let me look at Chos first, because he's the one that need help, needs help. He's got two Graph Diggers cages, two Fluster Storms. Well, you, you might bring in Misdirection just as an additional like uh, free counter spell. The Abyss, I don't like. Let's see, other good Notion Thief. Notion Thief, yeah, probably not. Well, I mean, it, it's not bad. You can turn to it in the stack. And, yeah, that's you know, Tim is playing a lot of cards. Uh, you know, it, it quote-unquote shuts off, like, careful study, but the discard part of careful study is the important part, not so much the draw part. Same with Hapless Researcher and Jay Farron's Prodigy. Yeah, yeah, I guess you would bring it in. Well, like, the, the interaction <laughs> with uh, saying which is probably just too rare to ever meta or likely meta. So one of the things I like about Misdirection against Reanimator, especially the hapless <laughs> researcher version, is if they have a hapless researcher in their graveyard and they cast Reanimate on, you know, some big fatty, you can misdirect it to their hapless researcher. <laughs> and that hapless researcher is gonna kill you. Yeah. That happened to me. I played a reanimator mirror. Nobody wanted to go for it because we were scared the, uh, you would lose the counter fight and then the opponent would reanimate your fatty. So I just took like 19 damage from a hapless researcher and then I lost the counter war. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I've done the opposite of that. I had somebody reanimating like a dark confidant post board um, and they were at 7 or 8 life and I misdirected it to a Sphinx of the Steel Wind in my graveyard. Oh, and that killed them? Yeah. It, it dealt them <laughs> 8 and. So, what is Tim doing here? He's probably bringing in. What does he have? Hmm. Abrupt Decays, I guess? Yeah, from. Uh, yeah, uh, Abrupt Decay is anti hate for the Graph Diggers cages and maybe even the Trinisphere. Uh, I could understand how that's annoying when you're, you know, drawing 14 cards a turn or whatever. Uh, I don't hate the Jace Farron strategies. This is another discard outlet because Joe doesn't have a lot of removal. and. Yeah, it's also quite grindy. Yeah. Uh, it can help you dig for hate. It can flash back, you know, on Entomb or whatever. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, Cho's taking out all the Tesserit, uh, the Jack deck things. Yeah, from Joe's yeah. side, I guess, like, putting in a, uh, the Abyss on the show, or not, yeah, well, yeah, on a show and tell. He has three show and tells. Um, would be cute, like, maybe a little funny. Uh, Does Abyss say non black, or? Yeah, uh, I, yeah, hold on. I'm pretty sure it says non-black, but I'm not sure. I just knew it is non-artifact. Non-artifact yeah. feature, yeah. That's what it is. Okay, so it actually interacts with Crystal Print at least somehow. Um, but, you know, it, it's just a cute factor. It's not, like, good. Yeah. Uh, Baleful Strix, I don't think he should be cutting, though, because if you oh, yeah. if you have, like, a Thopter Foundry out, you can um, get Baleful Strix back on an Exhum. Well, that and, like, it, you know, blocks pretty profitably, really anything. Yeah, and it's it's still like something to keep back with the brand. Like it's better in decks that can put on a clock, so you can actually have the guy at a life person, a life total where you can't like activate crystal brand at all. But it just sitting there prevents crystal brand from attacking. So I really like Bear for Strix in that matchup. So Tim also not sure what to do. He takes out Iona, which I guess makes sense. Oh, he's cutting Lotus Petals. Hmm. Yeah, I don't like cutting Lotus Petal. Your deck doesn't have a lot of mana sources. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, Joe isn't very sphere heavy, but he does have, like, Lodestone Golem now, Trinisphere. Oh, that's interesting. Now, now, Tim's hand actually looks like the kind of hand I was describing where you go, like, 8 card discard and then turn to reanimate Grizzard Rent with uh, Force Backup. Yeah. Potentially double force backup if he draws a blue card. Yeah. Oh, and that's the graphic Sage, but he can fight that. 
Yeah. Show unfortunately down to five, mm -hmm. and he's probably gonna yeah. It, yeah, he has to keep this. It has land plus hate. Like it's not a good hand, but it's better than an average four. Um, if Tim does fight this with force of will, then he can't just draw naturally up to eight because uh, he'll be down two cards. Yeah. So, so he might actually pitch force to force. Oh, oh, okay. So his plan is show and tell. He did just the the graveyard plan, I guess. Yeah, well, there's another blue card for, for Force now, also. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, uh, Joe does have some number of Wastelands in his list. I want to say two. It's three, actually. Okay. It's, it's an odd number, literally, and, you know. <laughs> uh, he did cut the Crucible, though, uh, which is fine, because trying to waste a lot, yeah. uh, Reanimator, you know, they can play on one land pretty easily, and they have basics. And I guess he's considering setting Chalice to zero here. But he didn't. I think it's yeah. it's worthwhile to try and draw a second land first. Mm -hmm. I mean, like, if Tim starts missing land drops and it's obvious he's on a show-and-tell plan because of Graph Digger's Cage, then yeah, uh, setting Chalice on zero to blank uh, a third mana source from Lotus Petal could buy him an extra turn. I was going to say, so Tim's Brainstorm, like, no, he has that polluted delta. I'm somewhat surprised that he fires off the Brainstorm right now. Like, what is he looking to draw? He didn't bring in the Thought Seizers. So Ooh. he's looking to draw... He's just looking for his third mana. Yeah, but he could still do that on Show's turn, I guess. I mean, if he drew, you know, both of his Lotus Petals... <laughs> he might even just play out any number of Lotus Petals, uh, because Joe missed his land drop. So if he does have yeah. a chalice or two chalices, you know, running one of them out on zero. Oh, that looks horrible for Chono. My cat wants me to play with him. <laughs> What's your cat's name? Uh, I have two. Uh, Squeaky and Spooky. Oh, which one deals more damage? Uh, spooky, definitely. He still has all of his kitten energy, and he is very squirmy. Alright, so uh, basics out of Tim, because he does want to hit that third mana, doesn't want to be wasteland. Max, Max Torsion, that's right, but then you would need to fetch for another basic island, and he only got a single basic island, because I guess you don't want to expose yourself to wasteland here, like, not at least not unnecessarily. Oh, that's a cute cat. Yeah. <laughs> he's trying to be a tuxedo cat, but he's failing. <laughs> And Joe finally finds some mana and gets to run out the chalice, which doesn't do anything against Tim's plan, unfortunately. If I was Tim, I would actually let that resolve, since Joe's very low on cards, so there's a very limited number of cards you even need to deal with. Uh, then you just hope to draw um, while you're a mana source. Yeah, so, so not playing out the Signet first, he is still playing around days. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. It's not like having four mana on the next turn does a lot for you. Maybe there's something. Yeah, so now Tim drawing an Ashen Rider, he does have a very safe show and tell. Um, you know, the, the issue before was what if Joe puts in Ensnaring Bridge? You know, what, what if he kept a hand because it has Ensnaring Bridge, Graph Digger's Cage Land? Actually, if you go, like, if show and tell is, is a very important plan for you, I wouldn't hate bringing in the Thought Seasons, which Tim didn't. Okay, so he decides to discard a Gristlebrand instead of one of his two reanimation spells with a Graph Digger's Cage and a Chalice on one out. Hmm. I, I would have probably pitched the reanimate there with double show and tell in hand. Yeah, especially since he's two cards away from casting a Prop Decay anyways. Hmm. But hey, it's the Mediocre League, so... <laughs> So what can Cho do here? Let's say he's trying to ramp into into something with transmit artifact. Maybe eventually get to get to uh, ensnaring bridge mana. But I guess you could play the signet, and then you've got three mana, and then you play transmit artifact, and then you get sacrifice the signet. Yeah, but then you play right into days, which you try to avoid. <laughs> Yeah, when your opponent has a 7-card grip, at least Tim is giving Joe a lot of time to um, get out of his really bad start, like that 5-card start. That was not a good 
Uh, good collection yeah. of cards. So, Bay for Strix. Getting the clock on. 19 rounds. <laughs> hey, that's a thing. Yeah. Slash Panther would be good here. Good. <laughs> good, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it kills Jace, so it has some merit. Mm. <laughs> uh, he wasn't looking. I threw his ball. He fetches. Both of my cats fetch, actually. Really? Did you teach it? No, that just came that way. <laughs> I imagine the other cats jumping to the table and operating the stream now. Meow, 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 meow. <laughs> um, so somehow, Joe eventually got to two, four, six mana and can now start assembling his top tier combo if he wants, but he's going for Transmit Artifact, probably for Bridge, but. Or Trinisphere. I... Yeah, but Trinisphere, like, it's quite obvious. That Tim is looking for for the Sean type land. Like the other thing that he could do is, like that he misses the green mana for an abrupt decay or an abrupt decay. Oh, actually, he, he would miss the, either the green mana for abrupt decay and the reanimation thing, or he's going for Sean and tile. And yeah, it's quite likely that he was going for Sean tile there. So you really want to force a fair. Yeah, as as far as important cards go, Bridge is definitely um, you know your most important card there. Yeah. Like for the matchup. So now he can sack Baleful Strix after blocking, say, a Gristlebrand uh, to n have Tim unable to gain life. Oh, yeah. Uh, but now he's Hellbent, so the show and tell is indeed safe. Unfortunately, he only gets like a 5 5 dog. Well, it... That's, that's vindicate, kind of vindicates the exiles. Yeah, he, he gets a 5 5 flying dog. Yeah. Which is something that Cho should be able to beat from this board, but oh yeah, he's he's probably gonna take a very the part of the combo. Yeah, I'd imagine he exiles the uh, well. If he well, is it destroy? It's exile. I'd take out the sword. Exile. I think, yeah, I think there's only the thing one. is, but now the the Bayford Strix and the dog are staring each other down, and uh, I guess Cho stands to draw much better cards here. But yeah, at this point, I think Tim needs Tide Spout Tyrant. Okay, he's taking out the cage. I guess that makes sense given how he discarded his. I guess Elishnorn. Elishnorn could also do it. I guess. Yeah, Elishnorn's a great answer to Thopter Sword. And Tim already blew both both shown tiles. I guess. So how many shown tiles does he have left? I guess he he's got one more shown tile left. So I guess he's what he wants to find here is a property cave. And yeah, the property cage would oh the okay, okay, so the cage is gone. So with the cage gun, he's got uh, yeah, that makes much more sense. And he made that to just get back Crystal Brand. Yeah, so animate dead, I guess slightly better than Exhum here. If it were Exhum, uh, Joe could sack his Baleful Strix to Thopter Foundry and get it back on Exhum, draw an extra card. Does Chow have any way to remove the animate that? I'm just checking. Probably um, not. <laughs> Black and red are not known for their enchantment yeah. removal. Technically engineered explosives, but he surely didn't bring that in. Yeah, not, not a great card. <laughs> and definitely not on two in your deck. <laughs> well, here's a Jace. And on Exhum. So we will get to see that Dr. Foundry play if... Uh, if Joe sees it. He should, I guess. Yeah, he's he's no dummy. Um, and there's a tight spot tyrant in, in the yard, so that's all good news. Hmm. I almost liked Joe's position at some point, but when the when the dog took away the Craftiger's cage, that's the turning point for me. Well not not the turning point, that's the point where Cho almost got back in the game. <laughs> So he did keep the his hand for Graftigger's cage, so Yeah. 
Yeah, and he goes for the play, he sacrifices the bird, gets it back. Three cards. Somewhat of an uneven trade. You get the 5-5, five, five, bounce all your stuff guy, and I get to draw a card. <laughs> so, does he bounce the chalice? Does he go after the thopter token? He goes after the chalice. It gives him a little Mystic. more value, uh, casting some of his one drops here. Mm. I see. Could get the Grave Titan, but that seems uh, mediocre. <laughs> At this point, I think Charles completely one hundred percent left out of the game. I'm having a hard time imagining what he could draw to get him back in it. I mean, yeah. even even if Tim was Hellbent and Gristlebrand didn't say draw seven cards on it. Yeah, and Chow gets to, like, with Empiric Tutor or Demonic Tutor every turn. Yeah. Hm. So do you want to try pronouncing Aethergrid's uh, full name? Um, yeah, of course. Girapur Ethergrids. That's fair. It's a good yes. effort. Does anyone know what, what, what a Girapur is? It's probably some region on, on some plane. The city of Girapur is a living thing, and living things defend themselves. Okay, so it's a city. Yeah, it sounds very fantasy. <laughs> you should Google it. Go you know, you know, if you know, if you don't know what something is, you would always Google image search it, and that makes for the funniest discoveries. <laughs> like when you Google image searched Joe, and then you found me or something. Yeah. I don't remember. Yeah, you, were, you, you told me you were the seventieth result for Joe Lawson. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, yes. When I was making some graphics for our website, um, I, I googled Joe Lawson face, <laughs> and then I found Hillary Clinton, and like quite high up. Uh, apparently, it's some part of Kaladesh, which okay, which makes that's... sense. It's it's linked to like Chandra and her parents and, and shit. Yeah, so forcible exiling the Chalice type bump Tyrant trigger, bouncing the land when Joe hasn't played a land for turn and has Slopter Sword in hand. That's that's an interesting. <laughs> that's line. actually giving him more value. <laughs> yeah, like if Joe didn't draw a land for turn, that would have just been giving him an additional land. <laughs> I, w I guess I would have either bounced Demia Signet or I don't know. I'd have bounced the else. Thopter token, probably. The equip token, yeah. Well, it doesn't really make like much of a difference, but yeah. Is Tim just looking to draw Elishnorn before or he goes? Yeah, Elishnorn like, is, is his safest way to win on the spot. Yeah. But he's also down to 8 life. Like, it's if you want to reanimate it, yeah, you, you would assume Elishnorn, of course. Oh, does he have... Yeah, he has Elishnorn. Of course, he's got everything. <laughs> well, in the yard already. I guess he entombed for it and uh, I was playing with my yeah. cat or whatever. And I missed it because I was telling some stories about Google image searches. Yeah, so now he launches the Thopter instead of the sword. Um, like, I don't know. It does, It really doesn't matter. Because mm -hmm. yeah, he would just sack the sword anyways, but the net result is the same. There's that off chance that he doesn't, and then he has to recast a sword on his non-existent next turn, because he's uh, he's just dead here. Yeah. And he blocks. He's attacking for eight, fifteen, twenty-two. Yeah. Well, he blocks the biggest dude. He takes um, fourteen, goes to one. But he doesn't really block anything, does he? Well, I mean. Oh yeah. no! Yeah, sorry, because the the token comes back to sword trigger, yeah. but it's a, a negative one, negative one. So yeah, he's he's just dead instead of going to one. So Tim confirms second place for himself. Caleb in third place. That means that Tim and Caleb are gonna face off uh, against each other next week. And I think we're also playing the finals next week, right? Yes. Or yeah. Yeah. So uh, Joe just going through the motions, gaining some extra life, going up to sixteen <laughs> before he takes. Uh, you know, more than 16. So, and then he scoops. Doesn't even let it go to damage, he just scoops. So yeah, one of the things I was interested to see, um, Tim had the option, so Tim, regardless of the outcome of that match, um, he's in the top three. And if he beats Joe, he's second place, and if Joe beats him, he's in third place. 
Um, so if he wanted to face Joe in the finals instead of Caleb, he could have just thrown the match and then hoped that Joe beat Dave, uh, which he did, to knock Caleb out of the top three. And, you know, that's kind of that iffy, like, is that ethical range? But it's not too different from, like, IDing in a paper tournament. Like, yeah, sure, you, you know, ID'd into 7th and 8th place with your opponent, but you knocked somebody out uh, that would have gotten 8th if you had played your match type of thing. Yeah, also the point I was making was that if Caleb actually, uh, not Caleb, um, um, if Tim scoops the match to Cho, then he actually has to go second against Cho, because then Cho would confirm second place, I believe. Because he's got the, he, he won the match against Tim, yeah, so I think you'd rather be on the play against Tim Fence than be on the draw against Tesserator. Well, I mean, those decks so. aren't locked in stone. Finals are three new oh, decks. Yeah. Oh, yeah, true. But we'll get to that in a second. I'm going to play the sponsor media thing first. Oh, yeah. Okay, so uh, thanks for watching.